We're at the world's biggest telescope. World's biggest. Welcome to the William E. Gordon Telescope and Angel Ramos Foundation Visitor Center. The world's biggest telescope. They're using it right now to search for alien life. Alien life. We're hoping that today's the day we find aliens. Crossing our fingers. I can't read it, but those are the rules. One of the rules I know, because we just learned about it from our friendly officer here, cell phones have to be in airplane mode. They don't want to think you're an alien or something. Am I right? Something like that. Yes, okay, something like that. We just got the real reason on the cell phones. It's so powerful that it can damage the antenna in your cell phone. That's why you have to turn it off. This is Satan with his pitchfork. <laughs> <laughs> Milan's giving us her interpretation of the planet symbols. These are the symbols uh, of the planet. A really good one interpretation. Yeah, it's <laughs> this is Pluto, but they should scratch him off now. He said not only do they not have or allow cell phones, they don't allow microwaves. So don't bring your microwaves. They don't allow vending machines. Anything basically that would send out a signal, they try to keep off the property. So it doesn't interfere with their experiments and so that it doesn't get damaged by the powerful telescope. Thanks, wristband junkies. Two, three, three. aliens! I was about never on, a sheet on his team where you cheered like that in the middle. I don't know. I don't know how to do it. You I go, thought you went one, two, three, aliens! Yeah, but then you go aliens and then out, not aliens on the way out. Aliens! On the way out. <laughs> I don't know that. Okay, well, welcome to the world of sports. Thank you. And the first time you learned how to do a cheer, you were going to this observatory. <laughs> <laughs> Remember what's inside a meteorite? It's right here. Okay, what's inside? We saw what's inside a meteorite. Now we got to see what's inside a moon rock. You're going to have to get one of these. This is a cool science experiment. When Leiden pushes the button, it does an imaginary meteor strike on this planet. I, there's, I don't have any more fuel left, so we need to spin that wheel. Okay, spin the wheel. Hit it, Leiden. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> There's on and off amounts of friction on there, so you can't make an even twirl. Shut up. <laughs> this is a display of different meteorites that have hit the Earth. They're pretty cool, especially this one. It's my favorite from Africa. Arizona, China, Mexico, Australia. Look at the Australia one. That one's cool. Dimmit, Texas. Damn it. This ride simulates an ice skater. Whoa, cool. You ballerina. I'm getting on this thing and you're going to be in first person view. Okay, I think I'm good. Wow. A little dizzy, but yeah, it's good. Here you get to send a message to space that goes out on their radio tele telescope. What we're gonna see today is a radio telescope. It's not like the kind you look through, it's the kind that listens to radio waves. And so it's a giant dish. You might have seen it in a James Bond movie. Kind of looks like this. These are just a few of the great movies that were made here. Contact and Golden Eye. is this? It's hard to capture how big this thing is. It got a little damaged during the hurricane. They just received $16 million in funding to fix it. So it is gonna be back up and running. And even right now it's running. If you listen really carefully, you might be able to hear that noise. That means they're running an experiment right now. And look at that helipad. Is it really a helipad? Or is it maybe for alien landings? That's what I think. I, I was looking at that house that you wanted up there. Oh, that house up there? Let's see if I can get in on it. 
<laughs> this tower back here, all three towers are just one gigantic concrete pillar. They poured concrete for 16 days to make that. And this one over here, it's like 300 feet tall or something. It's like 21 days of pure concrete pouring on top of each other to make that because they didn't want to have any breaks in the concrete at all. When they get out on the dome, they have to wear these things on their feet. These like little flip flops. One other cool fact is this little walkway right here. And in 007 Goldeneye, the actor, Pierce, is that his name? Pierce? I'll look up his name. Hold on. Here, Pierce something. I can't look up his name because I don't have a cell phone. He was running along here and it's pretty dang high. I don't know if you can imagine that. It is hundreds of feet high. I don't know. 300 feet high, something like that. So while he's running along, he gets halfway along there and then he had a panic attack. And so he had to have workers come up, help him down, and they called in a stunt double to finish the rest of the scene because he just couldn't handle the heights. I think I might have a freak out like that. I don't know. I think I could make it. As long as my kids weren't in it, I could make it. I think the best part of this whole thing is after the aliens come and land on this helipad right here, they can just walk across over here, come on up here to this little guest station where that's just me, Manon, Leiden. We'll give them a big hug. We'll welcome them to the US. And then they can come over here where they can get a hot, Empanada. Hot, delicious empanadas for any aliens or us. Mmm, <laughs> those aliens are in for a treat. I hope they brought cash. Another oh, successful field trip without other visitors. Just us tearing up the park. I didn't tear anything. They liked having us though. They made those empanadas just in case we wanted some or the aliens wanted some. <laughs> Probably so. Thanks for coming, aliens. Hope to see you soon. Come back soon. Security guard just told me we're at least 20 minutes away from the closest gas station and we are out. But he has faith we'll make it. We're gonna give it a go.